Whiskey Need is brought to you in part by Glenn Fittick and William Grant and Sons. Today, Glenn Fittick, the world's most awarded single malt scotch whiskey, challenges conventions once again as it reimagines celebrations across the world with Grant Crew. An exclusive expression that's been matured for 23 years and elegantly finished in rare French cuvee oak casks, it fuses together the finest flavors from Scotland and France to create a true taste of luxury to be enjoyed with others. Pick up a bottle of Glenn Fittick's award-winning single malt line today, almost anywhere. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Whiskey Neat, spirited conversations with interesting people. I am your host, Christopher Hart. Now, we have, uh, as I've mentioned, lots coming up. The Houston Whiskey Social is February 8th. Tickets can be found at HoustonWhiskeySocial.com or search for Eventbrite or Facebook. Uh, The show is going well. This is episode 101 Gosh, almost two years. Here we go. Um, I did want to add that I, I being the, the poor opportunist that I am, I forgot to mention uh, in prime opportunity over the last couple of weeks to ask my listeners to please rate and review the show on iTunes. Now, you can go to iTunes in your phone, to the podcast platform, search for the show, and give it a rating. Um be honest. I appreciate it. I just enjoy the support. So uh, lots of great feedback over last week's episode. And this week we sit down with a Canadian company. Uh, Typically what I like to do for the show is I like to do research. That's your job as a host. Research who you're talking to. I'm a fan of somebody, but even if I'm a fan of someone, I typically still go and I look and do a deep dive into things that I may not know about them. So uh, this is different. Today, we're going to have another, for those who are newer to the show, we'll have brand episodes where we sit down with brands, kind of de- dig into the product, taste through a few things, and learn about who they are and what they do. Uh, today is Signal Hill. It's a Canadian whiskey. And, uh, and for the first time ever, I thought I would go into this with an open mind blind. Canadian whiskey is going through a bit of a renaissance right now. For years, it was kind of written off. Um, most of it underproof, kind of boring. Uh, and, and that's the truth. Uh, unfortunately, Canadian whiskey isn't super well known as being a really, uh, you know, amazing thing. Uh, but a lot of people have changed that. Whistle Pig, Alberta Distillers, uh, there's a lot of great, even Barrel recently, Barrel Craft Spirits would sourced a bunch of really old uh, cast strength Canadian whiskey barrels. And uh, we did a bar- we did two barrel picks with them last year that were just fantastic. They were, one was 140 proof. It was just this really robust green candied apple, fantastic product and, and we loved it. So. Today I sit down uh, with a good friend, Matt Brown, and uh, we've got lots in store there, so pay attention. Matt Brown uh, also handles Edra Dower and Signatory. I have talked a lot about Signatory on the show, and this year we plan to make a pilgrimage to uh, a place where hopefully I see a few more red-bearded people, a place called Scotland, and uh, pick out a cask of scotch. Um, I would love to do that and we are definitely working on making that happen so let's get through this week's ads uh i am currently drinking glenfiddich 21 caribbean rum cask Uh, i have talked about glenfiddich a bunch on the show great friends with with danielle story the local uh south i believe her title is south texas queen uh, she's amazing. Uh, the brand is fantastic. Dave Allardyce, we've had on the show. I'm just a huge fan of Glenfiddich in general. So, um, they are sponsors of the show, which uh, you'll see in the opening ad that our friend and producer Jack has mastered. So yeah, go out and grab a bottle of Glenfiddich's award-winning single malt line today. I cannot express my love. I cannot express my love enough for the Balvini 14-year-old Bourbon Barrel Reserve. The 21 is fantastic. I, just, I, I couldn't be a bigger fan. So um, this week's show is, as always, sponsored by Tolado Distill Artists and Spirits, leader in premium artisan products like Bunahaben, Deanston, Lecheg, Tobermory, Baines, Black Bottle, and, of course, Scottish Leader. It is Lecheg. Recently, uh, there's been some question and comments over the pronunciation. It is Lecheg, and we are huge fans. We actually, I've mentioned in the last episode that we're running out of Bunahaben, 
and I've got to go pick up a few new bottles today. I cannot wait. So, um, Whiskey Neat is also supported by the Inspired Spirits at Glass Rev Imports and Amroot Distilleries. Amroot crafts one of the most award-winning Indian single malts to the exacting standards of scotch. Amroot Fusion also received the double gold blind and scored a jaw-dropping 96 points. Uh, look, um, forget the read. I've talked to you about this, guys, every week. I've beat it to death. Amroot Indian Single Malt is absolutely brilliant. We will. We were lucky enough, we mentioned in the last episode, to secure a, uh, I don't know if it's a single barrel or a private blend. We're working on it. I believe it's a single barrel for the state of Texas for the show and our, and our group, the Houston Bourbon Society. Cannot freaking wait. Very excited. Amroot, great sponsor of the show. Big fans. Last Brook Laddie, progressive Hebridean distiller since 1881. Our whiskey is 100% conceived, distilled, matured, and bottled only on Isla using 100% Scottish barley. What I have in front of me is the Isla Barley 2007 Rockside. All barley from Isla. Talk to you guys about it. Huge fan. Isla is my... Um, God, if I had a house there... I would be there several times a year. I'm such a huge fan. So, Brooke Laddie, huge fans of the show, huge fans of them. They will be at the Houston Whiskey Social this year pouring some fantastic bottles. And, yeah, I just couldn't be – I couldn't express my love enough for how much I love Brooke Laddie. And it is Brooke Laddie, not Bruich Ladich, which we've gotten that as well recently. So, so without further ado, Signal Hill Canadian Whiskey. Cheers. Matt, thanks yes, so much. Absolutely, dude. Happy nice seeing here. you, Chris. Nice to meet you. Me, Chris. You, Jonathan. Jonathan. Very nice to meet you guys. Nice. Um, super excited to sit down and, and and talk Canadian. I don't think we've done a Canadian episode yet. Uh, we we kind of briefed it a little bit at the beginning that uh, Canadian uh, few a few I think a few people are benefiting from maybe a bourbon boom. Uh, sure. Rum producers, Armagnac producers, and definitely can. can Canada. So, mm-hmm. um, Canada is what I almost said. But uh, let's jump into it. I'm excited. Uh, let me finish this. Let's talk Signal Hill. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Um, Signal Hill uh, is one of the newer Canadians on the market. Sure. Um, we're, uh, we're trying to do something different. So, traditionally, Canadian uh, whiskey has been very um, light, almost anemic. Uh, the packaging's been quite old, um, and it hasn't really been attractive to a lot of the new whiskey drinkers. Uh, not a ton of flavor, um, and just very one-dimensional. And um, I've been in the industry for about 25 years um, uh, with other whiskey companies, and always wanted to make uh, something very different, much more flavorful, and kind of show what Canada can actually do. Sure. Uh, it doesn't have to be the way it is. It was always driven by costs and things like that by the bigger companies. And with the boom of craft and smaller distilleries, uh, we've been able to uh, take the cost component out of the equation and, and say, well, let's do what we really want to do. Uh, and we'll figure the other stuff out later, uh, meaning the cost later. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of what we've been, we've been working on with Signal Hill for a few years now. Um, and uh, this is the... This is the the, the result. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, let's pour it. Let's 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 yeah, talk it. I see it's got a little bit of a Highland Parkish Norse yes. symbol on the front. What's the story yeah. there? Well, so Signal Hill is actually a real place in North America. It's uh, in Newfoundland, Canada, which is an island about. 1200 miles from the nearest city so not a lot of pollution and it's where the vikings first landed in north america and there's quite a bit of heritage there to it so we really wanted to bring uh some of the the history so while we're not bound by tradition so to speak in this whiskey we do like the history of signal hill and its importance in 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 the world um we also even have morse code because that's where the first transatlantic signal was sent by Marconi and Bell, which now we have cell phones. So there's quite a bit of history there. Yeah, uh, absolutely. In, in it. Let me. Uh, oh, here. Let's tell you what. Let's do this. There okay. We go. I had a little uh, scotchy scotch scotch before. Uh, <laughs> Got to grease the wheels a little bit during yeah. the intro. During the intro. So. Wow, the nose on this is pretty great. Yeah. So a lot of people don't know this, but in in America, our TT regulations or TTB regulations around rye means that usually. It has to be in a first fill barrel. Right. Canada is the opposite. So you can have a lot of 
that the the in fact the barrel craft spirits one I mentioned in the intro were all X Four Roses barrels. Right. So you can do a lot more in Canada uh, with Canadian whiskey than you can with our version of rye. Definitely. Um, so Canadian whiskey rules is it has to be at least three years aged in oak. It doesn't have to be new oak. It can be oak from uh, from all over the world. Um, this we do use four different barrel types on this. It's um, kind of a rum quality to it. It's interesting <laughs> that you say that. So so um, we do use some first run bourbon barrels. About twenty four percent is first run bourbon. Uh, we do use um, um, Canadian barrels as well, and then most of the oak you're getting is also new American oak, uh, medium char. So. You know, great whiskey's made really in the cellar with the barrel management. Um, yes, um, in today's day and age, you know, the still's getting stuff off pretty smooth most of the time if, if you know what you're doing. It's not like it was, you know, 50 years ago. Um, so you can get a pretty good spirit off your still. Uh, we use a pot still and a column still. So our barley in there is pot distilled and our, col- our corn is column distilled, and we make two separate whiskeys, um, completely separate whiskeys. They're not integrated and then, to the very end. And then end. blend them together? At the very end, yeah. Wow. And that's where you're getting some of those, um, interesting, you get some rum notes, because at the very, very end, we do bring them all together in a, an eight-year-old uh, Demerara rum barrel, oh, wow. just for a very yeah. short period of <laughs> wow. time. I didn't know that, guys. Yeah. I'm impressed. And I'm not, I was a, impressed. not an expert. <laughs> well, that gives it the sweetness without adding sugar. So yeah, you're yeah. getting a lot of sweetness on the nose uh, and a lot more fruit wow. on the nose. I'm impressed myself. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to tell my wife about this. Yeah. Con- considering well, like it's not product. in there for very long, you know, you're yeah. probably looking at 1% of the total uh, flavor, but it, it really pops it and it, it gives you it that quite a bit on yeah, yeah, yeah. that quite extra here. dimension of flavor. There's a, um, there's a ton of it, and I know I, I try not to make I, – I, I, Two, two things. So, and I mentioned this in the intro. Yeah, we generally try to do a lot of research just to be sure. And I thought today I would approach this more open-minded, not so like I know everything already, you know? Sure. And uh, I did. I was like, I'm going to do this blind. Uh, tons of vanilla. I definitely get that rum note. Uh, the nose on this is fantastic. And and thought I would approach this more because, again, Canada, I think, is kind of painted into that uh, bag, uh, yeah. maybe Pur- won't, maybe, bag. maybe something that's already on the table. <laughs> uh, the Crown Royal corner, you yeah, know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they've definitely pioneered it. Um, I do love my Diageo brethren. Sure. Uh, I mean, God, Lagavulin, and Talisker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't, I can't complain. But for a long time, Canada was Canadian whiskey was was kind of that the the Crown Royal purple bag, and then you start to see Pendleton more. Forty Creek, obviously, they've been doing a lot. And the nose on this is just, it's all candy. Well, and I think what's interesting is you mentioned Crown and kind of their influence. I mean, Texas is the largest market by far in the United States for for Crown Royal. Oh, really? 600,000 plus cases a year in Texas. Oh, man. So, huge business. Everyone's familiar with it. Everyone's, you know, kind of got that, their, their 600, story 600,000 cases in Texas? That is uh, astronomical. It's huge. <laughs> I remember years ago working for a distributor uh, that, that sold it. I mean, the, their warehouse of just Crown products was outrageous, just purple boxes everywhere. Was, but everybody's got their story of, you know, having their marbles uh, as a kid and grandpa's purple, oh, purple yeah. velvet bag. Yeah, I had them. <laughs> or spare pocket change. Exactly, yeah. You know, so, everyone uh, had a... Iconic. I know a guy that had a pair of pants made out of Crown Royal purple. <laughs> wow, that's commitment. Purple bags. Yeah. So mm. brought that to a little homage to what we've been doing and maybe talk controversy a little bit. Oh, yeah, bit. let's so. talk controversy. I mean, Bourbon Mash, uh, Crown Royal got in trouble for that, uh, I think it might have been two years ago now. Yeah. Uh, initially, you and for those who, who are curious, um, this is a bit of nerd talk, but – you, they got in trouble for putting the word bourbon on the bottle. You can't say bourbon on the bottle, and bourbon is not the only protected term. You can't say bourbon mash. Bourbon mash is actually its own separate category in the U.S., and you can't have a foreign product sold in the U.S. with the word bourbon mash on it. So Crown Royal got in trouble. They uh, surrendered their label, but were given kind of a window to sell what they had left in stock um, within a certain amount of time. 
and then they had to put an actual on a lot of the bottles they had to actually print like with a label maker that said this is not bourbon and place it on each individual bottle uh this when did you pick this up yesterday really <laughs> from yeah. uh like a mom and pop or specs P- pretty or? good store not specs but uh yeah. actually where did i get that yeah specs yeah so they were sorry good. i think about yeah. a couple different spots yesterday but uh so it's still out there yeah it's, yeah um, wow yeah, yeah. I, I haven't cycled um, through yet interesting but. The uh, I I don't know how long the time the time limit was. I thought it was a year, but yeah. if it's still on the shelf and it doesn't have, I, we picked up a bottle. I told you before the show, yeah. I picked up a bottle of nostalgia's sake because <laughs> it broke all these laws and it was a huge controversy. And so I picked up uh, I picked up a bottle and it had printed with a label maker, ah. this is not bourbon on the okay. bottom of it. So so this could be a collector's item. <clears throat> oh, it's definitely a collector's item. We probably item. should have. Uh, I haven't actually tasted it, it so <laughs> yeah. I'm eager yeah, to taste it. What's the proof on this? It's probably. Yeah, 80 proof, 80 proof. 80 proof. Yeah, that's a lot of things. Canadians also, they, they pretty much, they like 80 proof. Uh, you're seeing some variants, and I think our next variant of Signal Hill will have a higher proof. But, but I definitely yeah. encourage it. I will say that there is uh, a, a ridiculous amount of flavor coming from that bottle Thank at you. 80 proof. Thank uh, you. And, that, and they, are, they are not sponsors of the show. I'm paying for this episode. Uh, it Just a tremendous amount of sweetness and flavor that I, you're, I would – I would say you're not really accustomed to for Canadian whiskey. So Thank you. Definitely exactly, my hat's off to you for that. That's exactly what we were going for. Uh, we wanted people to see what we could do yeah. uh, when you're not kind of bound by tradition. Sure. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to our next type of release as well. Uh, it will be higher proof. The reason why we started with 80 proof, I think, was because, again, a lot of Canadian drinkers expect that smoothness, um, and they're willing to give up some flavor for smoothness, sure. which I, I kind of disagree with. But uh, We've talked about that quite a bit on the show. A bump and proof is, de- is definitely equal or equates to a direct uh, correlation in, in mouthfeel and flavor and that sort of thing. And uh, softness is, or I say softness, a lot of people use the word smooth, smooth or smoothness for kind of an easy drinking, less burn. This does, to me, smell like traditional Canadian whiskey. Um, kind of a I don't know why I always equate it to this, but do you remember, did you ever work fast food? Yeah, I did too. I remember the first time I, I worked at a Subway, there was a, um, you learned that like growing up, I would buy a bottle of Sprite working at a fast food restaurant with a fountain drink dispenser. You realized it was syrup mixed with carbonated water. There's a, a I always think of like a Sprite syrup, like a bright, sweet, syrupy, Okay. Uh, it always reminds me of that. Yeah. Not as a, necessarily a good thing, but mm-hmm. that's that smell I get is that kind of a, kind of a, like the syrup, you know, the fountain drink right. syrup? This is, this is the bourbon mash. Yes. And there's that nuttiness, yeah. Yeah. I'm not, um, I'm not a, a huge fan of that. Um, and this is not an episode meant to trash anybody, but. Well, I, I think, I mean. See there's the flavor a, difference. There's a there's a bite there, kind of a, a nutty. Uh, what's it? Beam is known for that peanut note. Sure. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, it, there's there's definitely bourbon notes in this, mm-hmm. but kind of a uh, kind of a younger, but you know, biteier bourbon. It feels like they're going for a very specific style that they're trying to, you know, do exactly what they've done and try to capitalize on the on the bourbon popularity. The bourbon boom, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, a yeah. big company want to go after something that's got a little bit of a trend to it. So you can't fault them for wanting to capture that. Sure. Uh, I think maybe <laughs> labeling it as that, you know, and the controversy backlash that happened with it. I think. Uh, oh, yeah. There was a yeah. guy locally that was all, all uh, oh, oh, yeah. Wade Woodard. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty funny to follow it and just to watch the. You could feel his 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 uh, next well <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> we we're huge fans of the local Diageo person. Her name is Myra. I'm such a huge fan of her. She came on the show. We talked a little bit about uh, Lagavulin and Isla and, sure. and how much I love that that place. And she's friends with Wade. And yeah. we were at the Texas Monthly Whiskey event. Okay. And uh, w- Wade kind of cornered her at the table to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it was a fun. Bit of a bone to pick, maybe. Yeah. As if she had any say so in that whatsoever. Is there any other uh, Canadian whiskey producer making using rum barrels? I don't know of anyone. 
No, not really. That um, might be a we only do it really to the very, very end. Yeah, pi- yeah, but that's still like a, yeah. a, a w- innovative thought that I don't think anyone else is doing. Uh, that sweetness is fantastic. It gives you a long finish too. Helps the finish a bit on this, so it's a nice long finish. It doesn't just die. Um, I've had Forty Creek in a while either. Yeah, <laughs> we, you know, again, we we want to keep it traditional, but we don't want tradition to hold up progress. Yeah. And I think that's the key. Like we 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 respect tradition. But if it gets in the way of progress, we, we, we have a problem with it. So we're trying to keep the best parts of the tradition and then um, move forward with yeah. things that people wouldn't do. And like you said, a, a little bit of rum in the whiskey doesn't really doesn't really hurt. It kind of enhances everything. Mm-hmm. Well, and I mean, I, I, bumps all I, the flavors. There's, I think, there's a, something to be said of a tradition versus the way things have always been done. Yeah, you know, uh, I said my wedding vows because that's a tradition. Right. Right. We got married because that's a tradition. Uh, versus just living with someone which is more of not based around a traditional thing as much as a habit. Yeah. Right? Uh, Canadian whiskey has always been a certain way, but I don't think Canadian whiskey, correct me if I'm wrong, has ever been super weird or protective around the way that we are about bourbon or the way the Scots no. are about scotch. C- Canadian whiskey has always done it certain ways. But it's not because of any kind of r- rules. It's more of kind of out of um, I don't. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not tradition, but just kind of you know. It's always been kind of eighty proof and like this. And it's not because they're super restrictive. Can- can- Canadian whiskey has always been very uh, progressive. Like you can do a lot with it, and it right. not be super. You know, with bourbon, you do anything to it, people lose their minds, yeah. right? We're very <laughs> psychopathic right. around, uh, you know, dude, that's not bourbon, you know? And it's, it's not that way with, that's what I love about Compass Box. We talked about that a little bit before, yeah. too, is they push the boundaries of tradition. And he has tried new things that have been met with resistance, like being uber transparent. I'm blending whiskey, this is how old this is breaking it down and then the scotch whiskey association slapped his wrist and said you can't do that well that's not the spirit of the law the spirit of the law versus letter of the law the whole reason those laws were put into place is to protect the consumer and to protect tradition and he's being super transparent and that's a bad thing mm-hmm. so i anyways i and I think you can see some of that too on a lot of the independent bottlers. You know, like if you read a bottle of Signatory or Andrew Murray or any of those, I mean, their labels are Alexander. As, Alexander Murray. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, th- those labels are absolutely transparent. You know, down to the number of casks, to the finish, to the everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, you get yeah. you get all the info right there, and uh, you can really learn a lot. And I think that that's. Uh, in this day, uh, more consumer-driven people are excited to know what they're getting themselves into, uh, and, and I'm hoping that you'll you'll see that a lot more too on, on different <coughs> different producers. You know, a lot of bourbon producers doing that. I don't know if I've I've thrown sh- shade at the German purity laws, but I'm going to right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, listen, we love traditional styles of beer. Sure. But the Reinheitsgebot. But they they are set in their ways mm-hmm. and there has been zero progress in the German beer scene and as I said with the Sam Hewn interview we'll, we'll make beer out of a boot if you give us enough doll hair like well American the American craft beer movement has produced some of the most amazing beers yeah. that have ever graced our lips we did a, a, a beer blend with a, a local brewery uh, called Nice Gaietti that was uh, barrel-aged stout with coconut and vanilla bean. Wow. And it was fantastic. Yeah. Versus, we'll be in Germany in a couple months, and I, I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to have a great time, but I'm going to have the same yellow beer mm-hmm. <laughs> that's been made there for hundreds of years. It's boring. You know, give me, give me some progress. You know, it doesn't have to... I think the German purity laws have, have restricted what they can do, and, and it's it's tried and true. It's sure. my grandfather's watch. It's always going to be the same effect of great beer, but uh, you know, I want something crazy. I want, I want you know, I yeah. want I want I want progress, and a Canadian whiskey in a rum barrel is a, a fantastic idea that I've never heard of. We can. Uh, I'm not going to divert too much because 
you know that we do import german beers within our portfolio Oof, as well sorry <laughs> didn't know that didn't no that's know, okay didn't know that that's okay uh so tbs uh we we actually import uh vine stefan the world's oldest brewery sure uh so we can you know ideally speak to that similar uh, for the record i didn't say it was bad beer no 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 no. <laughs> so no it's boring it. beer i get it i get i get i totally get you so uh, there's I a lot found of- it's interesting though there there are a very small handful of progressive german breweries that are trying uh putting in a little bit of effort stone has has a brewery in Germany now, so a little controversial uh, as far as what they're trying to do different than so similar. Hopefully, uh, in you know kind of same context theory to trying something progressively new in Canada, there are a few people bucking the the trends, and I think you'll see more of that in the in the you know upcoming. They're trying to be collaborative. Sure. So last year, uh, Vine Stefan did a, a collaboration beer with Sierra Nevada. That was kind of fun. Yeah, it was very delicious. fun. Uh, and, and innovative f- for them, uh, sure. Uh, you know, so that they're sharing ideas. They came, uh, you know, there's a lot of different progress in there. So hopefully, you know, uh, I think you'll see more of that. So, well, I think this would be fantastic in a. Uh, I'd like to see a slight bump and prove like a hundred proof option. Yeah. Uh, just enough to kind of add a. Uh, uh, a, an a alcoholic backbone to that sweetness, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but as it stands, I can't, my, my glass still smells fantastic and I've had two whiskeys in it after <laughs> and I can still smell the rum. There's that, that you, you said Demerara, that sweetness, that, that syrupy yeah. fantasticness I get right on the finish. So a lot of, a lot of Canadian whiskeys, you know, if they'll try to mix things up and go a little crazy, they'll maybe do some sherry cask aging at the end oh, or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. So we, we went the other direction and said, well, sherry's been done. It's pretty traditional. It's what it's what people are expecting. Let's see yeah. and experiment around. And, and the bourbon barrels with the, the rum go extremely well together. They, they marry beautifully. Um, um, the key is to, to, to get it to balance well, and hopefully we've done that, uh, where we haven't overpowered one with the other. Um, but um, that's really uh, some of the things we're doing. You talk about a higher proof, uh, definitely something we, we like. Uh, I think you and I are on the same page where, unfortunately, some people think that a higher proof takes away from smoothness when really it kind of can add a lot of flavor. And actually, you're, you're, you're taking some of that flavor away. Um, you know, one of the things we did with our whiskey is we non-chill filter it too, which is highly unusual for a Canadian whiskey. Sure, um, more of a Scotch practice. Yes, uh, but you really want to keep as much flavor as you can. Um, it, it's not easy to do at, at 80 proof, uh, but we were able to do it. It takes more time and, 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 and more effort. I mention uh, quite often the three indicators before you ever taste something uh, on the bottle that's a sign of a bit more effort behind a brand. Um, for scotch, usually I say no added color, bump and proof, and non-chill filtering. Yeah. Non-chill filtering is a fantastic uh, addition to this. So, I think people who know their whiskey would exactly look at non-chill filter. Yeah. If, if you're not a big whiskey drinker, it, it would go right over your head. Uh, but you're not the first person who, who's, who's very um, educated in whiskey to say, that's very interesting. You don't see that commonly with, yeah, it's not with, very a, common. with a lower priced uh, whiskey or with a, a Canadian whiskey or, or anything along those lines. You yeah. were saying too that uh, hope down the road, next iterations uh, of what we're trying to do with Signal Hill uh, we'll have age statements on it. So see. We, we will be bumping yeah. the proof most likely. Okay. Um, that's the next traditional beer we're going to break with the Canadian uh, drinker is uh, now let's see, you know, you, you, you know it a nice smooth flavor. For, you can keep a lot of flavor in your whiskey. It doesn't have to be one dimensional. Uh, if you use enough barrels and, and, and time, you will get the, those flavors and those uh, those longer finishes. Now let's go to the next level, which is let's bump up the proof a little and and. and bring that into the fold and show what we can do when we're at, you know, even if we're at, you know, 46% alcohol. Sure. It doesn't have to be, you know, even 100%. It doesn't have to be, a, you know. But maybe go up just to 46 to start. It doesn't have to be a start. hazmat bomb, you know. Yeah, right. yeah. And start with that and right. see uh, and see where it goes because I, I do personally like a higher proof. Sure. Um, and then you can kind of dilute it the way you want. Yeah. And you can change it the way you want, uh, which is kind of interesting too. So, so um this year, we can get into the details later, oh. but uh, we're going to make that uh, trip to overseas. To, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, we're I, ready. We'll I've, got a, I've got a comp. Well, I'm pushing to have a talk with the, the Detmores today. 
Okay. Um, we would obviously want to do it through them, and um, we're, we've got a couple things in the works. We're doing a run project with Foursquare as well. Oh wow! Uh, and I, I, I'm going to offer it to Specs first. Um, I think it'd be great to have a statewide release of sure. you know our own private blend of Foursquare. Huge ROM fan, as you can see, and uh, yeah, I. I, I I wanted to ask you, and I think we may have touched on this. Would this be a signatory or an Edradour? Could go either way. Yeah, uh, maybe, or both. Maybe, maybe one of both. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually had that conversation a couple of different times, different retailers, uh, as recently as yesterday. Of, you know, could could it be either one? Why not both? Did you figure out a time frame, time of year? I did. Uh, kind of late April. Uh, is we've got some folks going uh, already, and then we have room for another group in, in midsummer. So okay, let's, uh, let's talk midsummer. Okay, because we're going to France at the end of April. Okay, and we'll be in Armagnac and Bordeaux cool. for a similar uh, passion of uh, grape whiskey. It's beautiful. And then, uh, let and me then know if you have room on your tour for a cognac. <laughs> yeah. Something we haven't talked about yet. But, do uh, you have a? We, we do have a cognac producer. Yeah, we're we're kind of uh, lo- total we're in. solution. The so. answer is yes. So <laughs> okay. we, we have. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just realized you slipped in the name of your company right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, the we. <clears throat> We'll spend a couple of nights in France, and then sure. uh, May. I'm sorry, in Paris, and then the first couple days of uh, May, we're just going to spend our time meandering through West France, okay. down to Bordeaux, yep. and then we'll be at uh, Maison Ferrand, of course, for yeah. through the fifth. Okay. And then we will be in Europe from the fifth to the sixteenth. Okay. And just want to make a trip over to Germany at some point. Cool. So we're going to go drink some of that great German beer. Let me know. Uh, Set you up there, too. I would <laughs> I would love to see what kind of fun. Sure. Uh, if, like, if you're going to travel to France, there's like four things you got to see. It's, it's churches, mm-hmm. uh, castles, yeah. uh, uh, ruins, distilleries, like literally, uh, and old bars. Like every time we went to Ireland, we the oldest bar in Europe is Sean's Bar in Athlone. It's from 1100 AD. Mm. And you walk in the floor just kind of... Like, it's not even level, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so we, uh, let's definitely talk, because I, I okay. think it would be fun to... Yeah. We have nothing set in stone from the 5th to the 16th. Okay. Yeah, so, put some stuff but together. But after that, after that so. Scotland, okay. summer, Scotland fall would be great. All sure. those things. Timing-wise, for just just release in the in the fall, as far as being a, have it on the market, you know, mid-summer oh, that's the would goal? be... Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So summer, like uh, you were saying, so that it's in yeah. by O and D. Correct. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, O and D. For those who don't know, uh, who don't work in the industry, October, November, December, it is uh, the freaking worst part of the year. <laughs> it's the it's the busiest. Yeah. We 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 picked yeah. last year. We we did 42 projects with HPS, uh, 1,500 wow. cases, and we uh, picked from as early as the beginning of January, every couple months, trips to Nashville, trips to Louisville, all these projects, and then all of them just showed up in O&D. Yeah. And then we just had got bombarded. Uh, I mean, we picked a cognac at the beginning of the year, and that's uh, it's gonna be awesome, man. 23 years old, 11 months, $90. Wow. Wow. And uh, it's the only one in the state. Yeah. And uh, it will do that through some mom and pops. Sure. But uh, cash strength cognac. And that's a, a kind of a, not a boring category, but that's a slower moving category for right. for bourbon drinkers. Yeah. And uh, I plan to change that. What a lot of flavor. I feel, I feel yeah. like the cognac category is really interesting. Um, and, and people are very brand monogamous. Like, so oh, we're, 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 sure. We've Hennessy drinkers or. Yeah. We've effectively had one in the market for about a year, and for all of our trying, it's it's been a little bit of a challenge, just because people are very Set married the to their to their brand. They love, and that you know, credit to those brands for creating such a loyal customer. But uh, well, I think also there's a lot of uh, I don't want to talk down to anybody, but there's a lot of ignorance around spirits, sure. and so if you love bourbon. Then you look at other spirits as inferior and not right. realize that uh, these are barrel aged. That's why I called Armagnac grape whiskey. Yeah. It's 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 that's essentially what it is. They're distilled the same way, uh, except with different ingredients, right? right? And uh, it, you can have beautiful anything that spends time in a cask mm-hmm. is deserves your attention and love. Um, not all distilleries or all brands, but 
there's a lot of greatness out there outside the bourbon category, which is arguably the worst. I mean, it's not even that great. Bur- like, I'd much rather have a rye whiskey or very few current bourbon whiskeys versus the vast category of bourbon. Yeah. It's kind of very one note. Brown sugar. Cool. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. All right. We got one more. Um, so this is um, lot forty. Yeah. So this is a com, you know a competitor of ours, but uh, they I think they're they're on the right track as well of making some uh, better quality Canadian whiskey. Um, were these ranked in? Uh, were they put in that specific order? No. No. In progress. No. 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 I think um, we might have actually. We, I think lot forty is pretty so. well respected. Yeah, I think I think they've uh, done some some really good things as well. And What's the I name think of that other brand you were talking about yesterday that we were trying to find that's uh, kind of in the same uh, like, good. And words, you know, that's okay. that's another brand. Uh, that, again, another yeah, another competitor of ours. They're actually the same company as Lot Forty, um, but we think they've they're helping educate oh, people on a better fantastic. whiskey. Yeah, on a much better whiskey. And this is a rye, and I, I know you like rye, so mm-hmm. we thought we'd bring in a rye as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, just What's the mash bill on the Signal Hill? Is that is that public? Is it, yeah, so uh, we're uh, 6% barley, and the rest is corn, is uh, sweet corn in southern Ontario, uh, so everything's harvested not far from us. Um, so can the Canada's take on bourbon? Yep. Yeah, we wanted a little bit of rum, a uh, little bit of fresh barrel, a little, little bit of yeah. sweetness. Yeah, we use some new oaks. It's <laughs> so good, right? Really pretty good. So this is a, a, a real, and this is this is where your bump in in uh, proof is. That's a slight bump, and a it's slight fantastic. bump, but uh, it adds uh, just it doesn't take much sometimes. So we we think they're doing a good job of helping us and 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 all that. Raise so. the the bar a little bit. Raise so, the I mean, bar. We were in a few different stores yesterday. Uh, big stores, little stores, um, and it's interesting to see the category. Uh, I mean, you have a lot of your plastic fifths and their uh, handles of, of Canadian whiskey that have been around for, I mean, you know, for generations. You know, a lot of brands that are have Crown in the name. <laughs> but sure, definitely not Crown. Texas Crown. Texas Crown. Yeah. There's a few other ones. Um, so trying to ride that coattail a little bit. Um, a lot in a lot of what you would almost look like similar to you know entry tier blended scotch like a, your black velvet your uh, god I haven't uh, had black velvet in uh, years Canadian Club sure. all those guys uh, brands that have been you know stood the test of time for for better or for worse loyal brand yeah exactly yeah. Uh, I mean maybe, you know pe- people love them and or obviously they sell they're still on the shelf um, but it's interesting this premium tier um, there's not very many brands out there at least in the market here. Um, and so um, it's interesting, and we're hoping, you know, kind of talking about these two very different, um, but also very different than these two. Sure. Uh, and then, of course, that. But um, I think as you see the, the variety of hopefully long-term variety oh. of brands, that people will get a little bit more aware of what's happening in Canada. Yeah, I, th- I think there's a renaissance going on yeah. with the smaller players. Yeah, Obviously, sure. it starts with small, and then the big guys come on board as well. Oh, well, I mean, the whole um, reason is this bourbon mash. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. Crown's been killing it for years, and, and they're obviously they're noticing things around them, and they're they're trying to, to adjust, adjust accordingly. I thought you'd like this one, too, because it's, it's I was hearing about you liking rye, and I think oh, this yeah. is a great expression of what they've done. Uh, like, you take these two are in a whole different category than a Crown Royal or a Black Velvet, and I wish it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to start yeah. getting outside of their comfort box i think it's come with younger consumers they're the ones that are driving what all this i don't claim to be um a whiskey expert but i would uh I, and i definitely am not super familiar with canada's laws around whiskey but you've got something that is 94 percent corn versus rye whiskey and they're both labeled canadian whiskey mm-hmm. what's the legal definition of canadian whiskey so it just has to be aged in in barrels. Um, doesn't even have to be new barrels three for three a minimum of three years. Yeah. Oh really? Um, yeah. Um, so a lot of the lower price brands will be at that minimum level. Sure. Um, we're we're uh, aged a little bit longer as well. Um, lot forty, I believe, is as well. Um, but there's no regulation on proof. There's no regulation on what gra- grains you use. It could be under eighty proof. 
no, it has to be at least 80 proof, sure. but it's, it's very, uh, the, the laws. But distillation like proof can be is whatever. It doesn't have to be, yeah, it can be 140 proof. It can be one, one, 160. It doesn't have to be anything specific like bourbon. Um, is it limited to corn, rye, and wheat, or is there a? Um, it, it can be wheat. It can be any type of grain. Um, so it's very open. Um, it has to be, it does have to be aged in Canada. Um, but really, it's like you said, it's kind of a shame that Canadians haven't taken advantage of those lack of regulation so that they could be more uh, Yeah, that's what know, I mean. It's, it's, not, it's not a matter of tradition. It's a matter of uh, habit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's not, uh, there's no uh, mob mentality around what it should be. Uh, versus the way we feel about bourbon or scotch feel about scotch and yeah i think sadly it, as as the bigger brands took over they they made it like that because it was a, a cost thing and a profit thing and and um you know with the with uh with the craft boom and and the millennials wanting more flavor and and demanding a little bit more quality it's allowed guys like us and and some of the other players to experiment more and, and get onto the shelves where normally you know 10 15 years ago they'd look at us and say y you're crazy sure so it's it's really um it's progress it's like you said it's, it's evolving and um um that's that's been great for us uh for a small company so uh, would it be safe to assume that you're Canadian? I am Canadian, Mike. I came in from Toronto just yesterday. Oh, wow. See, I I'm authentic. I don't think we've got a Canadian person I'm on the show. authentic, yes. Uh, in the range. Yeah. Well, it was interesting. We are talking about you know, kind of the perception of <clears throat> Canadian whiskey worldwide. And you were, you did some deals with the whiskey exchange in, in the UK. Yeah, we've broken and, some uh, barriers. You know, the whiskey exchange first looked at us and said, uh, wow, you kind of like you got guts to bring that in here. and they did try it and they were what, like well you know what we this is not what we expected <laughs> well, in a good way uh, and for those now who don't they, know they sell us rye is a very resilient grain to cold temperatures corn yes. is not so yes. typically most canadian whiskeys are rye based and uh they were you, they were for you to do a corn whiskey uh or a corn based mash is, is interesting it, yeah. i don't imagine it's very cost effective either no Nothing about this product is cost effective, <laughs> uh, which is good and bad. It probably means none of the big guys will copy it uh, because it doesn't make uh, sense financially, financially for yeah, them. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, first generation, uh, we do it more because we love it and we just have an idea of what we want. Sure. Um, we're not maybe as good businessmen as uh, some of the bigger guys are. Some of the big guys. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so like things like the whiskey exchange in London, uh, now they carry us, but they were, they were shocked uh, like you were and saying, wow, this is not what we expected. They typically wouldn't even carry a, a Canadian. If anything, they'd maybe carry crown because it's crown, but, uh, but outside of that and, and, uh, we're slowly breaking down ideas, which take a long time, but, uh, do they have know. the similar three tier system in the UK? They do not. No. It's actually extremely open, so um, which I like very much. So we can actually sell direct to a retailer even if we want. Uh, we definitely don't need an importer and a distributor. We could have one um, um, that can do it all, or we can even go direct to a chain uh, from and just get a warehouse and ship it in direct. So it allows you to do a lot of things, uh, get people to try it, whereas normally, you know, you can't. So we started with one, the Whiskey Exchange. Now we're in, you know, two dozen other accounts and and we can do that sure um whereas the u.s is, is a very hard system oh, u.s sucks it's, man it's very it's, the US it's is very horrible. difficult <laughs> i mean the, the inducements and you can't do this and you can't do everything yes. we're, we're pushing uh there's something we'll talk about off air but there's something with the there's one hang up with the whiskey social that a lot of other people who are trying to I don't want to say copy in a negative sense, but there are some uh, traditionally events in the state have been bad yep. and th I'm, we're not perfect, but we've heard a lot of good things about our event. I would agree. And there, you've been there since the beginning and the there's one hang up that uh, people run into, could potentially run into. Mm -hmm. There is a solution. No one wants to do the solution. <laughs> so... <clears throat> We're working on combating this as well, but it's, it's it seems like no matter what, the, 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 people talk about blue laws, there's about 50 
at any given level tier, whether it's importation or supplying tier or retail tier, there's about 50 completely stupid, unnecessary rules that, that really shouldn't be there. And they're there almost... Uh, we had the head of the TABC on the show, right. generally uh, General Bentley Nettles, uh, where he talked about how they went from something like 125 different licenses uh, within the state down to like 30, like or 70 down to 30. But it was like they're getting rid of the agent license that you need and all these unnecessary, archaic ideas of what's needed in order right. to just sell booze. Mm. And... Uh, I got into an argument recently with somebody over the idea of dis- distilling alcohol-free spirits versus distilling alcohol spirits. Like okay. she, I have a problem with the zero-proof spirits that are for sale yep. um, because they're like forty-five dollars, and if you just put them into a bar, that means you're buying a fifteen-dollar cocktail. There's no booze in it, yeah. and she's like, "Well, what's the difference between high-quality ingredients and a alcohol?" free spirit distillation process versus high quality ingredients in a alcohol. I said, well, well, first of all, it's much more expensive. Why? And I was like, well, no, it's expensive because you have distillation runs. You got to do more. Is a single distilled, double distilled? Uh, it's double distilled. Double distilled. That's yeah. you. And why there's taxes. Everyone that's, forgets. That's what I was getting taxes. to. Taxes. <laughs> taxes. Lots got of the three, taxes. There's a, there's a, a three tier <laughs> requirement system and taxes at each tier. Of course, it's more expensive yeah. to, to, to have a product, a $40 bottle of booze versus a $40 bottle of distilled water are two completely different profit margins and one of them is fantastic as far as profit margins go (laughs) but trying to explain it to someone who by the way she works for the distributing tier Mm -hmm. you should know this yeah and uh, they're trying trying not to come off as a yeah. jerk online while trying to like scratch my head like how are you not seeing this? Mm-hmm. Uh, she she eventually saw it and, and we were fine. But um, <laughs> our laws are stupid is my whole point. But yeah. listen, I uh, this was uh, a very pleasant surprise. It was great seeing you. Have you been yeah. on the show yet? This is it. No, it's man. First time. Yeah. You got to come on more. I we've, we've got. got a- a- a lot, a lot of pl- different things to talk about. We've so. got a lot <laughs> planned with you this year. Okay. I want to have you back on to talk Please. Edward Dower and Signatory. Yeah. Uh, and our Scotch single barrel pick that we are committed to doing this year. Fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. I, I can't wait. <laughs> and yeah, thanks so much. It was very oh, nice meeting you. you. Nice, nice to meet uh, you too. And by the way, how much is, is the standard shelf SRP? It should be right under forty dollars. Under forty so, bucks on the shelf, bucks. you can find it. I know Specs is going to have Specs it. Specs has it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we thanks so much, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Balcony's first ever year-round bourbon was an inspiration. It all had to work together. A blend of carefully selected ingredients, Texas-sized pot stills, and creative people determined to find the absolute best way to usher a new whiskey along. When you discover how it pairs with a meaningful moment, suddenly the feeling of drinking great whiskey becomes a whole lot more.